Hi there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. I'm not sure when you're watching this. And welcome to another Learn Live edition. Um, today, my name is Bert Walters. And for that instance, tomorrow my name will be the same. Uh, and I hope the same goes for Karsten. Uh, Karsten, good. Well, for us, it's now good morning still, I guess. Yes, Bert, it's good morning. Hi from me to the audience. Uh... Uh, let's, let's introduce ourselves. I'm sitting in my caravan. I'm I'm at a customer site, and uh, I got uh, uh, I got free for these uh, learning live event. But after that, I will install Azure Stack HCI at the customer uh, and go on with it. Uh, my name Carsten Rachfall. I'm a Microsoft MVP like Bert is. Uh, I'm a cloud and a data center management MVP and also an Azure MVP. So cloud and data center management, it's all on premises, I always say. And Azure is all the cloud. So I should be the perfect hybrid MVP. Uh, Bert, what's with you? I think you are in the cloud already or all in the cloud, right? Yes, I am all in the cloud already. And, and one of the reasons why you are um, such an inspiration to me is because you have the two check marks. You are <laughs> and data center and an Azure MVP, and that, that's double the greatness in my book. Um, yeah. My name is Brett Walters, as I already said, uh, I'm an Azure MVP, um, and I've been working uh, with Azure for the last 10 years, approximately. Um, and I do that from the Netherlands, that, that small itty bitty country next to our big brother, Germany. Yeah, and I'm from Germany, not the big brother. Um, my heart is still uh, on premises, so I do a lot of uh, installations, Hyper-V, Storage Basis Direct, and now we have the great Azure Stack HCI. And uh, uh, this Learning Live is about ARC, so the great Azure ARC possibilities and a bit Azure Stack HCI. So uh, where can the people find us and uh, go with us through the model? model? Well, if you can go to https double point double slash aka dot ms slash learn live dash 2022 b you can interact with us um i also if you like have a very long url that's on docs.microsoft.com slash learn that i'll spare you for now but they can scan the qr code right so they, this will also lead to the to the uh, website. Karsten, yeah. weren't you the on-prem guy, the, the the old world? Yeah, yeah but I by I have I have a smartphone now for ah. half a year, so I know what a QR code is. <laughs> ah, nice. Okay. So if you're not familiar with QR code yet, uh, that's that thingy in the left bottom corner. And if you open the camera on your phone and you hold it in front of your screen, I know that kind of looks silly. Uh, like this, you should be able to scan it and it will take you to wherever we go today. Um, and today we are going in full hybrid mode. Um, and I, I've never seen Karsten in a full hybrid mode, so that will be fun. Um, <laughs> we are going to talk today about integrating Azure Arc with Azure Stack HCI. Um, and Karsten, you just told us that you're going to install an Azure Stack HCI right after this session. But what the, the, the hey is an Azure Stack HCI? If, if you haven't heard of this yet. Yeah, I, I give you a, a small introduction. Um, uh, first, Laurent uh, uh, said that there is also in the chat, in the YouTube chat where you were watching is also the link to go through the module. So what is Azure Stack HCI? I had, I think two or three weeks ago, I had another learning session with another MVP, Andy from the US. Uh, and we talked about the basics of Azure Stack HCI. But imagine you have the goodness of Hyper-V, so mm -hmm. the Microsoft virtualization platform running in a cluster. And most of the people who do that still on premises use a SAN storage. So the good old way with a LANs and you present them to the hypervisor. But there is a newer concept. It's called HCI, so hyperconverged infrastructure. In mm -hmm. essence, you have a storage cluster. So you build mm -hmm. your 
your uh, your data is in your Windows Server or Azure Stack HCI cluster, and on mm -hmm. top of that, you have also your virtual machine. So you have, for example, a phone node. Uh, cluster with disks, with NVMEs, with SSDs, and the VMs are also running in that. And it's not a new offering from Microsoft. Uh, Azure Stack HCI is quite new. It uh, The first edition came out in December 2020. But it uses all the great technologies from Windows Server and uh, storage spaces direct in, in Windows mm -hmm. Server came out with Windows Server 2016. So the technology is already six years in the operating system and microsoft did a let's say unquote a fork of the goodness in windows server uh, get rid of everything that you don't know need for virtualization and clustering and storage spaces direct uh, so we, we don't have the possibility in an azure stack hci os to install a domain controller an active directory it's pure the stuff you need for virtualization and mm -hmm. edit uh, the hybrid functionality from Azure. So the Azure Stack HCI is is installed on hardware that mm -hmm. is on premises. So at the customer, it's not a solution that is running in the Azure data centers of Microsoft. It's a solution for on premises. For example, I'm at a company in the moment that uh, is uh, a dairy, a, a big dairy. So they produce products out of milk and. For that, you need, for the production, you need some things that you can't do from Azure because in Germany, we have still a latency of over 20, sec 20 milliseconds. Uh, it's not like in the Netherlands where our data center is right around the corner, right? So um, there, are, <laughs> exactly. So there are still some scenarios where you must have your hardware on premises. You can't really do that in Azure. And uh, mm -hmm. Azure Stack HCI is the perfect solution for those scenarios and also for people who have other requirements that can't be fulfilled with azure it's also a good solution so uh, windows server is still there storage basis uh, direct is also still there but the new mm -hmm. offering where microsoft does great new stuff uh, and who is interested uh, go back to the other learning live module it's recorded and we will have some more learning live modules about azure stack hci so short introduction of azure stack hci but now back Thank to you. arc and that's uh, your part what is arc bert well arc is kind of a one-stop shop mm. where you might say well I, i've got my stuff in all places and i've got in in, in uh, microsoft there there are other companies that also say that they offer cloud services not that I'm aware of any names from that space, but I know them. <laughs> I, I hear that from customers that other companies might offer similar services. Yeah. Um, you might have some stuff in your own data center. You might have stuff running um, at some kind of um, hosting provider. Um, and uh, Azure Arc tries to bridge the gap in manageability across all of those locations. We have some um, great slides about that, but first let's introduce our moderator so you can ask questions in the chat if you have questions and they will pop up uh, in the live stream uh, and we can answer them. So let's go to the next slide. I think uh, our moder we have two moderators today, but I think only one is in the slide, right? It's only flow. I on. only had a blank slide for our moderators because they're, they're so modest. And okay. they always stay in the background, but yeah, we have two Microsoft to employees helping us with it. We can't really uh, watch uh, on all the on all the channels what uh, the questions are. So uh, yeah. let's go to the first model or give them an overview what we talk about uh, today, huh, Bert? Yeah. So today um, um, will be a stepping stone up into the world of Azure Arc, um, and specifically with HCI. But again. This will be a guided tour. Um, Karsten and I will ease you into all of this uh, uh, maybe new material for you. Um, we're going to look at Azure Arc, its components, how, how is it built up, um, and a couple of use cases. Now, if you followed along in earlier uh, editions of Learn Live um, about Azure Arc, um, you might already know this company called Contoso. Um, I've never visited them, but they seem to be a quite big company. Um, and all of the use cases are presented um, by the likes of the Contoso company. 
So our first learning objective for today is what is Azure Arc? Um, next, we're going to look at the principles on how to integrate Azure Arc and Azure Stack HCI. Um, and if you are really lucky today and the demo gods are with us. I hope they will. <laughs> yes, I, I hope too for you, Karsten. Um, Karsten will also show us some, some, some of the stuff that Azure Arc and Azure Stack HCI can do together. Um, and of course, we will describe for you the benefits of having Azure Arc um, combined with Azure Stack HCI clusters. What are the things we can now do if we would have Azure Stack HCI running in our data center and let that be managed by Azure Arc? Um, and, and maybe Karsten can also, at the end, have a look at what kind of stuff do we need to do if, I'm not saying that this will happen, but if Azure Arc will fail, do we now have a totally unmanageable HCI cluster? No, we will not, Bert. Oh. <laughs> Austin, you're such a spoiler. Yeah, we will see, we will see. Yeah. This was a great cliffhanger to keep people engaged till the end. Because everyone I think, I, know. I, think I, I show Azure Stack HCI a bit in Arc, and uh, we also will install um, Arc on a server live, so to give some, to de deviate a little bit from the slides. It's a very slide heavy presentation, so I, mm -hmm. I, I put in two demonstrations, and I hope that they went well because they are really live. <laughs> the suspense is killing me. Me too. Yeah, very good. Very good. <laughs> okay, let's let's go to the first module, shall we? Uh, and oh, by, by the way, Karsten, with with a live demo, you mean a pre-recorded version, right? No, 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 no. It's really live. <laughs> no, no. It cannot fail. <laughs> it can. It, it can. Oh, I I will give my best, and we are live. Oh. Yeah. So it's a. It will be a fun session, but it, it won't fail because I know Karsten, and Karsten does everything. The German way never fails, right? So, in this module, we will look at the the fundamentals of Azure Arc, uh, how it's used to bring new capabilities over time to management um, and to monitoring of your Azure Stack HCI clusters at scale. Because this is the fun thing, right? Once you have onboarded in this Azure Arc, you might even call it an ecosystem. It just doesn't stop. You might have new features coming your way in terms of manageability of that stack month by month. Because once you are onboarded, Microsoft, through what we call extensions, can add more capabilities, more features. Um, so again, this is cloud. This isn't just stopping at the first implementation. This is an ongoing process. Um, and I refuse now to call this a journey because everyone calls cloud a journey. I'm not one of those guys. So um, looking at this module, I kind of gave it away a bit. Uh, we do this uh, uh, by using the name Contoso as a, a fictional company name. Uh, Medium-sized financial services company uh, headquartered in London, England. Ooh, th this might now be a compliancy thing with the whole Brexit stuff. Exactly. But, I was thinking the same. It's not the okay. EU anymore, right? Uh, okay. Let's not go there. We ignore that. Uh, yes, we ignore that. Okay. Um, and they have offices around uh, the world. Yeah. Obviously. We can put it in Amsterdam if you want to. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> well, I, I know a few big companies just left Amsterdam because of the tax climate. But again, okay. politics, politics, let's not go there. Yeah. Um. So what is Contoso running? In fact, um, they are still heavily relying on the Windows Server platform. Um, they are uh, running virtualized workloads on Windows Server. Um, unfortunately for them, still 2012 R2. They didn't listen to Karsten that good, I think. Um, but they also have a couple of Hyper-V hosts already running 2016. Um, their internal IT staff, from Contoso, they already know the Windows ecosystem. Um, they're well uh, equipped with uh, Microsoft knowledge from back in the days. They they know their 
uh, Windows Server. They know their domain controllers. They know they know their stuff on prem. Um, Bert, but Bert, now, uh, can then, I add something, Bert? Yeah. Um, you mentioned Windows Server 2012 or two, and uh, many people I I know, many many companies are still with uh, workloads in Windows Server 2012 or two, and here is a. Uh, a good thing that we have in Azure, um, it's the extended uh, security update. So mm -hmm. if you move your Windows uh, Windows 2012 R2, Windows 12, Windows uh, 2012, Windows 2008, 2008 R2 uh, to Azure, um, you, you get extended security updates. Why do you need that? Because next year, Windows 2012 and Windows 2012 R2 will go out of support and then Microsoft will not offer any security updates anymore. And that's in the today's climate with all the security issues, ransomware. And so it's very important that your operating system still has active security patches. So the, be the best way, of course, would be to get your workloads out of Windows 12 uh, Windows 2012 R2 in a newer operating system, let's say Windows Server 2022, you get a lot of advantages, but larger companies sometimes have some timing issues to really move all their VMs. I know a customer who has over 1,000 VMs where we are just uh, sitting and um, a lot of them are still in Windows Server 20, 2012, 2012 R2. So if you move those to Azure, you get those uh, extended security updates. And now the segue to Azure Stack HCI, Azure Stack HCI for Microsoft is Azure. So we get the same extended security updates for Azure Stack HCI. So if you move your virtual machines from Hyper-V with Windows uh, 12, uh, 2012 R2 or even older down to uh, Windows Server 2008, you get these extended security updates for another three years. And this offer is free in Azure and in Azure Stack HCI. Just would to, uh, wanted to mention that because what, what's described here in the Contoso scenario is for me at, at my customers quite a reality. So it's not uh, something you'd say. In Azure, we are most of the time faster, but on-premises, a lot of dependencies are there and you can't move so fast from one operating system to, to another. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt you, Bert. Yeah, no worries. Um, but but you're absolutely right because uh, every time I do a workshop at one of my customers uh, about upgrading Windows Server editions or moving away to in public Azure, for instance, um, I always say, um, you could also move your 2008 or two or later VMs into Azure for extended support, yeah. but you don't run them anymore, do you? <laughs> Each and every company. No. No. Yes, we do. Yes, yes, we do. We don't talk about it, but we still have those things. Mm. So it's a reality for for everyone, I think. Instead of maybe the the, the startups, the the hip and shiny people out there who do everything uh, serverless and functions and logic apps and uh, yeah. Yeah. Until they start to use other software from the past. <laughs> True. Um, so again, uh, Contoso is kind of the reality company, uh, a fictional reality company we're using uh, throughout these series um, to map back to whatever scenario where we're kind of uh, looking at. So first point of business, characteristics and capabilities of Azure Arc. What is it? What can we do with it? Um, and from the people who produce this show, we get our content and we get great definitions. You know, back in school, when you when you were learning how the world looks and, and, and how the weather goes across the globe and you had to learn all kinds of definitions, wasn't that fun? <laughs> Maybe for you, not for me. Um, so Azure Arc can be perceived as being the core component um, where you can integrate non-Azure resources with Azure. So let's say you've got this um, crazy management team who manage all services um, and they have to remember how to log into other cloud vendor stuff, um, the data center, um, the secondary data center, where you keep all of the stuff for your uh, failovers. Um, um, those 
tedious applications that run elsewhere. You know, where, where we have a contract which they will run our stuff for us, where we don't really know where it runs. Hmm. This is what glues everything together. Well, if you start and use this. Um, and I already kind of explained why, uh, because it is getting more and more complex. Um, especially if you look at the data space, um, you want to be able to work with a consistent data set. But now you have SaaS applications and the data in those SaaS applications needs to be consistent with your HR database. And your HR database needs to be consistent with your identity provider. And how are you going to maintain all of those resources? Mm, yeah. Well, Azure Arc, there's your answer. Um, it can run on different hardware, uh, in different data center locations, um, in other public clouds, in maybe other private clouds, and of course, at the edge. And how does that then look? In a schema like this. It is a wrapper, but a very big remark to take into consideration. Azure Arc provides you with management capabilities. Why do I want to emphasize that? Well, um, I can look at all of those resources from a management perspective in one view, but can I also make sure that I can log in to certain VMs from Azure Arc? Hmm, or is that still something that is defined on a per VM basis through an identity provider? No, this works on the management layer. This gives you insights. This will give you possibilities like um, compliancy insights. Are all of those things compliant to my business standards or not? And if not, then I can, of course, remediate that. So Azure Arc really works on that management layer, um, gluing everything together. So resources in different customer locations can be made insightful by Azure Arc, but still be maintained by local management tools. So let's say your company has been compromised and those evil hackers have gained control of your local management tools. Azure Arc isn't a fixer upper there. You will still need to go in and fix the access to the management tools. It's not like the panic button to fix everything. Um, we even have a kind of a limited set of resources to support. So um, the thing it will give us if, is a form of uniformity. If you are already accustomed to working with Azure CLI to maintain and manage your stuff running in public Azure, you can also manage and maintain uh, resources in your own data center. Um, if you're accustomed to working, for instance, with Azure Policy, Super duper feature. I really love Azure Policy. Um, for the people who don't know what Azure Policy really, really is, um, imagine you are off to a bowling party. Uh, and I, I don't mean the drink. I, I mean the, is it a sport? I think it's a sport, right? It's bowling, bowling sport. yeah, it is. It is a sport, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> for me, everything with a bowl seems like a sport. Now, you can uh, bowl on a professional level. You, you've got your bowling lane, and you've got those two gaps on the sides of the, of the bowling alley, where my balls always kind of tend to go. Or you can put up those racks, right? Those safety racks on the side of the bowling alley. That, for me, is Azure policy. They are my safety racks in Azure. 
if my company doesn't want me for security or compliance reasons um, to deploy my my stuff in East US, because I'm Dutch, we have a West European region here, I need to always deploy everything in West Europe. I can enforce that using Azure policy. Hmm. Even if you are the super duper admin, even if you are the Karsten Rachval of your company, you can do that. Yeah, what, what you can do is remove the policy, do your illegal thing, put back the policy, but then you are logged, my friend. That is audited and you will receive a cardboard box on your desk and you may go. <laughs> that is Azure policy. Azure policy is cool. So let's dive a little deeper now. Now we know what, what Azure Arc can do and see what, what kind of resources is it supporting. So of course, we start at the basis of every IT environment in the world, still. Azure Arc enabled servers. We can onboard Linux and Windows virtual machines and provide a sense of management across those virtual machines. And I know lots and lots of companies are saying, we are going to the cloud. We are not using virtual machines. Each and every company I know, I visit, yeah. still have a couple of VMs somewhere. Maybe they aren't in the amount of five or 10 years ago, but we still need them. We still love them. We still call them. Yeah. Bert, and uh, you think VM, but we can also put it on physical servers. There may be some customers who have still physical Sorry? boxes. What, what, what's a physical server? Can you maybe explain <laughs> to you? Where, where the application directly runs on the hardware. We don't have virtualization. But you know that, Bert. Yeah? Not what? everything is in VM. Most of it. And what I find amazing is that we can do that for Windows. Microsoft is the Windows company, right? But uh, you see there is a word Linux. Linux, I don't know how you uh, pronounce it correctly. Linux, we call it in Germany. Uh, but you can do, we can even do that with Linux. And that's, for me, is really amazing. So Azure, Azure R can also manage not only Windows servers, uh, uh, or, uh, but also Linux machines. Yeah. Linux VMs, yeah. We love everybody. Yeah. Uh, and especially um, Linux penguins. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, but that is on the operating system level. Yeah. Um, then we have some very specific resources we support. Um, SQL Server instances, for instance. So, yes, we support the operating system underneath the SQL Server. But also, we can manage that SQL instance on top of the OS. And then for if, if, if we're just calling out names right now, right? Uh, another hot name right now, Kubernetes. Um, it supports a whole lot of Kubernetes distributions. Um, and I'm not sure, but I, I think with Kubernetes, we can now do anything. If, if, if I understand the meetings in the boardrooms correctly, uh, we might be even able to, uh, to wash our windows soon with Kubernetes. Every technical difficulty we, we now face, if someone in the meeting says, let's use Kubernetes for that, you'll get an applause. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Kubernetes is really, I'm, really, I'm really in. hot. Important for me. So I played around, of course, with Azure Kubernetes services. That's the Microsoft impl implementation of Kubernetes in the cloud, the managed yeah. one. Uh, and now we can have that also outside of Azure on Azure Stack HCI and on, in Hyper-V clusters and storage spaces direct. But what, what surprised me was also not Microsoft Kubernetes. So if we have a Kubernetes implementation, let's say, I, I think it's it's OpenShift or something mm -hmm. uh, from Red Hat. Uh, um, VMware has its own, or uh, you can install it with Debian. Azure Arc can be installed uh, in, in those Kubernetes clusters and uh, give you a lot of insights and policies and so on. And I think that's great because I believe 
I'm, I'm, you see my handle, right? My Twitter handle. I have mm -hmm. the handle Hyper-V server. I'm a big Hyper-V believer, but I think um, the next evolu evolu evolution or the, the next version of virtualization will be containers. Not mm -hmm. for everyone, not right now, but I think we are going that way. And uh, sure. Kubernetes is a, a container cluster, yeah? a high available uh, uh, version, a standardized version where we can deploy a lot of uh, containers. Uh, we have high availability and everything. So this is a way where the industry will go over the next 20 years, let's say, and ARC is already uh, able to manage those uh, new re resources. Um, by the way, we have a question from uh, from YouTube. Um, does oh. ARC require public endpoints and can it be completely private? Can you answer that or should I? Well, if, if you would like to. Yeah, I... Of course, you can use it with uh, public uh, endpoints, um, but if you have, for example, an express route or a VPN, I think, I'm not quite sure, but I think we can also use private endpoints. Maybe there are some hiccups that not all things will work over private endpoints, but I think Microsoft will fix it because it's still a journey, right, Bert? <laughs> <laughs> we have not in the final state of everything, uh, but I think it can. Do you have other information? No, I, I thought the same, but as you have your doubts, yeah, I do too. So I didn't want to call that out just yet. Yeah. But I, 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 I think, think it can. Way. Maybe, yeah, maybe Flo or, or Jimmy can give us some information because they are from the Microsoft Fast Track team, and oh. I will if we have time. Uh, explain what, what fast track is it's really uh, a cool solution if you want to go to azure or you're uh, with uh, the resources and azure stack hci is also azure microsoft has a team that can help you with that and speed up your movement to the cloud with pocs with uh, insights with uh, sessions and so on uh, Great, uh, great people. I work with some of them. I, I know some of them personally. So, so they are helping us here with the chat and maybe they can give us a hint if we can use Azure R completely over private endpoints or if we still, uh, if there are still some glitches. Yeah? But so far public, of course, private, I think some stuff works, but I'm not sure if all works. Yeah? Cool. So maybe a question for our esteemed audience out there on YouTube. Um, if Karsten's Twitter handle indicates where he's a fan of, where do you think I'm a fan of? Of yourself? Uh, again, <laughs> spoiler. Come on, man. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about the other services. <laughs> yeah, uh, HCI wanted... we're going to do a dive into in, in, in depth in, in just a moment, right? Yeah. Um, physical clusters uh, can report back their status uh, through Azure Arc. Um, I'm already thinking going ahead too far right now in, in, in your sessions. Um, you already discussed the uh, Azure Kubernetes services on Azure Stack HCI. Uh, so there you have it. That's supported as well. Um, and Azure Arc enabled data services. So I'm, I'm immediately back. I have to close a window because it's shining oh. in my face. But you look so good in the, in the sun. Yeah, but I couldn't see the I couldn't see the screen anymore. So I'm ah, back. Nice, welcome back, Karsten. Um, so this extends even beyond the SQL Server. Um, we also can make it insightful. The SQL Managed Instance, uh, Azure Database for Postgres, um, and of course um, the Azure Stack Kubernetes Service and HCI are mentioned again. Um, now, a few weeks ago. Microsoft also um, released another service around data and data management. Um, if you are into data management and, and you're watching this to see what Azure Arc can bring you, also have a look at Azure Purview. Azure Purview is a service in Azure really meant to give you insights on your data estate. So where is my data residing? Uh, how is it doing? Is it healthy? Et cetera, et cetera. So yes, Azure uh, Arc can do amazing things 
with your databases, uh, as we said, managed instance, a Postgres SQL Server, but we have a more tailored fit service for data management as well. And and with if I say we, I of course mean myself and Bill Gates. <clears throat> no, I mean Microsoft community, etc. Um, so these are the types of resources that support Azure Arc at this moment. moment, right now. If you are watching this webinar in June, July, October 2022, or maybe even later, check out the documentation. Because as I said earlier, Azure Arc is an Azure service. We, they are adding more and more features over time. So can Azure Arc do anything? Check the current documentation. Now, how to enable this Azure Arc? And um, I think Karsten will show this in, uh, in a future uh, module, or is it something you'd like to show right now? How do we enable Azure Arc? Yeah, we can we can do it live because we we talk a lot and we uh, maybe we show a live demo if if you would yeah. like. So now you see my screen and I'm I'm um, logged in into a demo account in the Azure portal where you see some resources and we have here very pro, uh, prominent uh, Azure Arc. Um, I have to click on the not on the slide. I have to click on the other screen. Give me a second. So here we are. Take two seconds. Yeah. So if we dive into the Azure Arc session of, um, of the Azure portal, and of course we can do it with PowerShell, we can, add, we can add systems with PowerShell, we can maybe use Azure CLI, but I'm used to the portal. I, I, I'm a Windows guy, so I, I love the mouse and the keyboard. So here we have the different uh, resources you talked about, and here's already another one in preview. We haven't on oh. our list, so there's a, there's already the v VMware. We can add VMware virtualization uh, environments over the vCenter integration, and then we can also manage all the VMware VMs. Uh, uh, in addition, of course, we can um, install arc in uh, on every server if it's running on on vmware if it's running in another public cloud if it's running on hyper vr wherever but with the vmware vcenter add-in we get some more possibilities of course so i will go to the server here um, and you see i have already some uh, arc enabled servers here uh, is it is it big enough uh, Lauren, I can I can make it a big yeah yeah, I do. yeah okay so now I think now it's better so we see here we have some servers some are offline some are connected and uh, um, connected means not Azure is actively con communicating with those servers the servers are com communicating with Azure so you don't need public IP addresses of course for your servers it's all over an agent and the agent contacts Azure and this is how it's done so no public IP addresses involved on on our side of course Azure public endpoints, we were not sure if we can do it over private endpoints, but that is how it works. So I want to add another server here. So I go to add and we have different, um, let's say, assistance, what we can do. So we can add a single server. I will do that. We can do if, if servers, uh, we get also a script for that. And mm -hmm. um, there is also other possibilities. There is uh, add servers from update management in preview and add, add servers with Azure Migrate. So there are different possibilities how we could add uh, servers to Arc. I use the generate script. So I click on that. And now we have, of course, some informations what we need. Uh, I, I always call it uh, it's advertisement. Nobody really needs that, but there is useful information there. So uh, we see we have to have HTTPS access over 
443 to to the Azure services from our side. We need a local administrator on our machine where we install or where we will run the script and then it will download some additions we need and it installs the software. So we, we need the, the sufficient rights. Uh, um, and here we have the co uh, connectivity method. And here we see we need a resource group already in Azure where we where we add our resource. So I uh, click on next. Now we have our details. We have a subscription. I'm so fortunate that I have multiple subscriptions. That's an advantage to be an Azure or a cloud and data center management MVP. Microsoft gives us some resources that we can do all the stuff. And then I take a um, resource group here. I choose this one. And in which region? And I prefer also Amsterdam in this example. Oh. Um, so uh, the region um, West Europe, uh, it asked me, should I create a script for Windows or for L Linux? Uh, I'm a Windows guy. Um, it would be nice me seeing installing it in Linux, but we want to we want to have a success, so uh, we do that. And here, here's an answer for the question. So the connectivity method is either the public endpoints. We can we can leverage a proxy server if our machine can't directly connect to the interset, but uh, internet, but we have a, a proxy, for example, we can do that. And here is also the possibility to use private endpoints. So um, this answers, I guess, the question we had before. So let's, uh, but I don't have a VPN or uh, an express route set up from my carrier run. No, not from my carrier, from my, where the machine lives to Azure. So I use the public endpoint. I choose next. And now I can give uh, information. Where is the machine? Because if you imagine Contoso is a mid-sized company, they maybe have some hundred uh, resources in Azure or, or uh, uh, managed with ARC that are not directly in Azure. And then you have uh, want to have some information. Where is the resource? Is it uh, on-premise? Is it in, in this location? Is it maybe in another public cloud? Is it on VMware and so on? And we can do that, of course. So I can choose the data centers I have done before. So I I give it the info, give it some information, and it's handy that the old information is here. My resources in the moment are only in Germany. Um, and here I can add um, other resources. And if I even want to, to use some custom tags that are only available to me, I can also add them. So I can uh, create own tags that are not usually used by Azure. These are the, these are the uh, ones that are available in Azure. But here can, I can do more tags that are, not, are only that, that I use, that are meaningful for me, for example. So then I go on next, and here we get a script. So this is a, yeah, I would say it's a, it's a PowerShell script, um, and uh, we can copy it. Yeah, we can download it. So here I can copy it. I will download it, and you see, it's I have already done that because I like my demos uh, that they, that there is a chance that they work. <laughs> so I most of the time I do it first one. Uh, first to try it. So I open the folder and you see here's my onboarding script and I uh, this is fresh created. So I copy that. And now, now I have to go into the machine, the server that I want to enable in ARC. And for that, I have here the good old failover cluster manager. And if you look here, I, I choose one of the virtual machines. Oh, no. I have to connect to that. So let's do it here. To it. Then I have to log in. And this is a fresh installed Windows server uh, that is domain joined. Uh, there is, it has some disks and so on. So you see here, I installed in the right corner, you could see it. Very, very tiny, uh, but it's a Windows Server 2022 20, data center edition. I installed the eval because this is not a production machine. So I 
I just uh, took li the liberty to uh, download the eval version. And here I, 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 um, I go to the file system. I have a have a, a folder and in this folder I paste the PowerShell script. So I now I have to um, start PowerShell, but the important part is we have to, to start it with the proper right. So we need a local administrator and um, of course for security reasons we don't turn on, um, we turn we don't turn off the URC so I have to uh, give the information that I'm really an administrator. So I change to the to the directory. Um, I I hope this is not too small. I can I can uh, make it a little bit bigger so I can enlarge the font. So now we see it. I'm here in PowerShell in the directory. Here's my script that I downloaded. So I do an R. let Azure find it, and now I just. I just uh, start the installation and you see um, we will install the Azure Connect machine agent. Um, we download it from internet. So we need connection to, to, the, to Azure somehow, but for Arc we need it anyway. So if we want to manage our machines, we need an, a machine that is online that has the capability to connect to the cloud, to Azure. And now we are downloading uh, the package and I have to uh, authenticate the machine. So I open the device authentication in Azure. It was already open, but I did it again. And then we have a small code here. And of course, you can automate that also. So now Azure, it asked me, who are you? I, I choose And I am Carsten, and now the installation will go through. You see here, and now my machine is Arc enabled. And after a short time, we can see the machine in Azure. Uh, mm -hmm. We will uh, we will look into that in the second demo, uh, if I remember, of course, that we just look if the machine is there. So, Bert, back to your screen, that you can continue with the presentation. So. If you were looking closely, um, you also saw the name of the agent Microsoft is using to add individual um, uh, servers to Arc. Um, maybe switch back to your screen, uh, Karsten, so we can really uh, show it. So if you see the first yellow line, it's the Azure Connected Machine Agent. That's the one we use to connect individual servers to Azure Arc. Um, and as you might know, we, we have a lot of agents out there. Uh, we also have agents out there with extensions. Um, but we'll look at those in module two. I promise we will. Okay. Um, so this was how to enable Azure Arc. Let's uh, let, let's continue with uh, with our uh, our death by PowerPoint um, and see what the key benefits of Azure Arc are. In daily practice, what what are you benefiting from? Um, well, one of the benefits, and again, think about your distributed environment, is that you have central overview. Where is what running? Um, and we can still use Azure management groups to see who can do what using Microsoft's RBAC. And if you're old like me, you see no hair on top. Um, you might have been engaged with the older version of Azure, where we had two RBAC roles, administrator and co-administrator. Um, in our new Azure environment, uh, and if you're a millennial, the only Azure you know, we can have custom RBAC roles. We can really set permissions on what specific users can and maybe even cannot do. Now, we can also do that on the management layer of those services running in our data center, in your data center, anywhere, as long as they're supported by Azure Arc. So it is really that single comprehensive inventory of your organizational assets. Uh, and we can use our tools, our friends, 
to manage those. PowerShell, you just saw Karsten run the PowerShell command to onboard, right? We can also use Azure CLI for management purposes. The Azure REST API. Um, and of course, if you, as Karsten likes, the mouse clickety-click, you can still use the portal, of course. Um, but there's more to this because we were all, are continuously look, looking at the management plane. But what about central reporting, central monitoring data? How do you monitor your resources in Azure, for instance? The easy, straightforward answer that's on by default is Azure Monitor, of course. So what about having the same data for resources in your data center? So if you want to have metrics from a virtual machine running anywhere, one answer, go to Azure Monitor. Because through Arc, those metrics are sent to Azure Monitor. Uh, and for our security friends out there, our security boys and girls, what about log analytics? Sending all of your event logs, your sys logs, your security logs into log analytics, maybe even with a solution like Sentinel on top. And I think Sentinel can be a whole um, series of learn live events on its own. So we won't get into detail there, um, but it is amazing how that security system from Microsoft works with that ingested log data. Also enabled by using Azure Arc. Um, of course, we have slides into the wazoo um, about what services are uh, uh, enabled where. Um, one of the super cool things, I think, is the ability to apply Azure VM extensions. What's an Azure VM extension? Well, we talked about the agent, right? So on top of that agent, because we already have that trust relationship between the agent and Azure, we could piggyback other functionality. For instance, I know this doesn't happen at your company, but let's say we've got one guy in this company or girl who's really super duper great in PowerShell. And he or she creates um, 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 scripts that are used by our department that are, of course, stored in our departmental disk somewhere. Uh, no version control no updates, no, nothing. What if we would store those in Azure and use the VM extension to run those scripts in our data center? Then we've got version control. We have centralized updates to scripts, centralized managed of all of our resource with the scripts. Very powerful. Very super powerful. Um, Support for Azure policy guest configuration. What? what what's, a, what's a guest configuration of a, a policy? Again, looking at those racks next to your bowling alley, I talked a little bit about what it can do for you in your Azure environment. What if one of those policies could set the configuration of a virtual machine? So it needs to adhere to a certain patch level. It needs to have certain update, et cetera, et cetera. Manage it centrally from one place. Um, for SQL Server, um, we can use uh, advanced data security by using Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Um, do you have um, Microsoft Defender for Cloud enabled? Oh, I, I must you, confess, you, I don't think so. I'm, I'm, I want to. So yeah. I want to integrate all my Azure Stack HDI clusters into Azure more mm -hmm. because it's growing on me. But for me, Azure Arc is also quite, quite new. So I'm just grasping all the concepts, and there is so much good stuff in Azure Sentinel, for example. I'm very curious about. Uh, um, uh, 
how to use that to increase the security in my environment. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But we have a little bit of a timing problem. We thought we had much, much, much too much time, but we are at 55 minutes. So we maybe skip over these slides because they are all, they are all in the learning module and go a little bit ahead. I fear we have a little bit of stuff to show and I want to do the demo with Azure Stack HDI later. So um, for sure. Yeah, there is great stuff uh, we can do with every uh, with every uh, thing or thing. Uh, on these slides, we see what are the benefits specific to those resources, right? Yeah, true. And there's now, more. If, if you haven't been online since November and you don't know Microsoft Defender for Cloud yet, it is the new name for Azure Security Center. Okay. Just wanted to put it out there. <laughs> um, of course, again, these are all in, doc in the documentation um all of these uh, uh services we can enable with uh, uh azure arc and don't forget to follow this um, additional reading link again as carsten explained in in the beginning that little square in left down uh, corner that's a qr code and you can use your new smartphone carsten kudos yeah um to <laughs> enable more content there all right, now let's see how smart you really are. Did you pay attention? Did you pay enough attention? Did, did you walk away to, to close a curtain or maybe get some coffee? And you might have missed this, but what component is required in order to establish a logical connection between an ARC-enabled resource and Azure? And we see a lot of agents here, I, I can imagine. Um, your head might be spinning with agents, but is it the log analytics agent? Is it the Microsoft dependency agent? Is it the connected machine agent? I, I think with with Karsten, I, I think Karsten, I think you you are dependent on Microsoft, right? I'm dependent on yes, Microsoft. Yes, you are a regular <laughs> dependency agent. Yes. Don't confuse our our people out there. Give the, give them a oh, tip sorry. about. <laughs> Let me see. Where is think, the... think think back about uh, Karsten's demo. What agent did we see in the first yellow text? And indeed, do we have a couple of answers already? I, I think we, we have a very smart audience today. Yeah. We, yeah. we have 100% of the connected machine agent. So kudos to you. Well done. That's good. Yeah. Next one. What is necessary in order to integrate an Azure Stack HCI cluster with Azure Arc? Is it the connected machine agent on each Azure Stack HCI cluster node? That seems excessive, but maybe it works. Um, install the Microsoft dependency agent on each Azure Stack HCI cluster node. Or do we just register the Azure Stack HCI cluster with Azure? So to be fair, this was not really covered in the module. So if you mm -hmm. see something that you heard of, it's my it's maybe not the right one. Ah. As a small tip. And I, I hope I'm right. <laughs> yeah, but Come on, answer C. That 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 sounds too good to be true. You think? <laughs> yeah, it, it it can be that easy, right? Yeah, yeah. Wrong. Question, it, it is that easy. It is. It is right. Yes, right. of course. It's it's as your arc. It's designed yeah. to make our life more easy. Yeah, and that's great. You have to register an Azure Stack HCI cluster in Azure. That's a requirement to really. Um, have uh, workloads on the cluster. And uh, when you do that, uh, by default, it's also ARC enabled, but you can say, no, I don't want that. I don't know what the reason would be to not want uh, the Azure Stack HCI cluster ARC enabled, but you still can refuse it. But usually when you register an Azure Stack HCI cluster, it's ARC enabled. And I will show an ARC cluster very soon. So nice. um, let's let's go to the next module because I I, I we I think we get a time constraint here. Yeah. So um, should I do that or would you like to go on? Oh man, you you, you jump in. Yeah. Let me see. So I will I will go to my presentation and when I'm there, Laurent can maybe switch the screen. 
Okay, thanks, Lobo. So we had we had that already. Sorry. So um, now I have not too much time to go uh, to the presentation. By the way, Bart, great stuff. Uh, very good explanation. I, I learned also a lot uh, uh, because you have much more insight in Azure than I do. So, but now we go to the model manage Azure Stack HCI based virtualization workloads with, with Azure Arc. And um, we have already talked about Azure Arc, uh, that it expands the scope of the Azure Resource Manager. Azure Resource Manager is the engine in Azure that is really deploying resources, uh, uh, caring about resources and so on. And with Azure Arc, we get an extension uh, of the Azure Resource Manager to other resources, so outside of, of Azure. And we already talked about Windows servers, Linux uh, servers, Azure Stack HCI, Azure Stack HCI VMs that are running on. Uh, on Azure Stack HCI and all the other good, good stuff, Kubernetes and so on. So uh, what are the capabilities of Azure Arc enabled Azure Stack HCI VMs? We, um, we have now, there is a new possibility. So we have now, um, this, the slides are not, uh, not from today. So uh, I think the last months, um, there is a new resource called the uh, Arc Bridge uh, in Azure Stack HCI, and that helps us even more with automa automatically enable our VMs that are running in Azure Stack uh, HCI. Yeah, but uh, in essence, uh, Arc enabled Azure Stack HCI VMs, uh, we can enable from the portal. Uh, you see it here. When we have them enabled we get a lot of information about the machine we have uh, and we don't have the time to really read through all those uh, uh, different things but we have of course uh, uh, an an overview about uh, the vm we, we we see in the azure arc portal an overview which processors are there um how, how much, how long is it up and so on. We can access the activity log. So what was really done uh, in the Azure Resource Manager with this resource. We can, uh, Barrett already talked about access control. So we can really uh, give control to those uh, resources. We can assign tags. And you have seen when I enabled a VM, a, a Windows server, um, there are the tags, where is it, and so on, which data center that are the tags that uh, uh, Azure Arc gives us. And then we can even add custom tags. So maybe we have, for example, um, um, if if you have a lot of VMs, maybe the VM is, uh, is uh, a VM from the let's say, exchange department. It's an exchange server, if you still do that. There are still customers out there that don't use Office 365. Don't be shocked, Bert. There are some. So maybe you want to uh, build this VM to those people and you need the additional information. This VM is from the exchange department or even maybe a number for accounting that they know when they create a report that we can also do. This VM is has to be accounted to this uh, accounting number and so on. We have the extensions. You talked about that. There are some Microsoft extensions and I think there is a slide and the PowerShell extensions. We have locks. We have policies that we can uh, deploy. We can even integrate our uh, uh, Arc resource, our VM, our server, the Linux server, our Windows server in uh, Azure updates. That's also a great one. Yeah, <laughs> I know, Bert. <laughs> we have the inventory. We see all the stuff that's in the machine. Uh, we can change tracking. So if an administrator changes something on the machine, there is it, it's it's visible for us. We can do our I think custo uh, queries to mm -hmm. to get all these informations. We have inside and we have logs, uh, uh, and there is more information, of course, about all those uh, uh, different uh, settings and even in the module. So here is the VM extensions. Uh, we want to. To, this is very special, and Bert already talked about that. So if you have people who are very uh, PowerShell savvy, uh, you can do anything 
on those resource uh, on those uh, arc enabled resources on the windows servers and powershell even runs on linux so if you uh, have your script wizards and they can uh, script things you want to do on those machines maybe on all machines in the data center in hallenberg um, you can script that you have them in an in a repository in azure and you can um, um, uh, execute uh, those scripts on those machines. And we have also other custom extensions, the log analytics agent, the Microsoft Dis dependency agent. We can roll this agent through the VM extension out to our Azure servers, HCI cluster, whatever. And maybe there are Azure extensions coming. So this is, I, I, I'm not allowed to say journey, but this it's a continuous involving uh, process where we get more and more um, possibilities. Yeah? So the equi equivalent of an VM extensions, uh, uh, or there are also extensions for Linux. So uh, of course you don't have, uh, there are different extensions. You can use PowerShell, but not many Linux uh, um, administrators are really using PowerShell. They are more using Bash also, another shell, and you can script to, for that too. But I have never done that. So what is the role of Azure policy in managing Arc-enabled uh, Azure Stack HCI VMs? And this is something I think Bert knows much more about than I do. But in essence, if you are a Windows guy and you have your Active Directory, many people use group policies where you can set settings on all your Windows servers. Uh, you can uh, enforce firewall rules. Uh, you can do uh, install software. You can do everything in a Windows environment with group policies. If the machine is an act in an active directory. So now imagine the same possibilities as far as I understand it. That's a, the benefit for me and maybe Bert can add something. But now imagine you do that from Azure, but not only for your Windows machines, so with Azure policies, also with Linux, with Kubernetes, with your data services. So you have your policies where you set uh, this is possible on this machine, this is not possible, and you can enforce it to Azure Arc. Do you want to add something here, Bert? No, exactly. No, no exactly what, what, what you're telling. Uh, I, I do want to um, touch upon your um, uh, custom script extension, um, mm -hmm. because you just said uh, if it's running in Arc, you can use your script and do anything with the server. Now, for the people who are running around in their office space, with their hands in the air in total panic. Yes, you need our back permissions for that. It's not that if it's uh, onboarded in Arc that anyone can just run any script on any server in your environment. Oh. No, it, it is in line with the R back permissions you've set in Arc. Yeah. True. Well, very important. You're, yes. you're right. I, if you got this uh, impression, of course, my fault. Not every user who can log into Azure can also do those things. You have to give the right permissions to do that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Correct. So what's the role here? We have um, assigning a specific tag to a resource. Here are examples what we can do with policies in Arc. Here is Windows. Uh, so for example, you can say, uh, is there a Windows server where Windows Defender exploit guard is disabled? You get that information. Um, then we have other things. Are Windows servers in this uh, in this uh, data center, for example, not Active Directory joint, you get those information and then you can enforce those policies and change that. Um, are there uh, Arc enabled servers running Windows or Linux without log analytics agents? And then you can install it uh, over, over Arc. Uh, uh, and for Linux, an example, do we use still on uh, machines uh, password, user and password, and not the much more secure SSH keys uh, for authentication? So these are some examples, and there is much, much more you can do. There are uh, built-in uh, policies, and you can extend for your own uh, requirements. 
And here's a link about where you can find more information. Bert already told you that this down in the left is a QR code. Take your phone if you have a smartphone and then you get to the link. You can also, of course, uh, type in the link. Uh, so let's go on with a small knowledge test. And let's see what are the questions. Which VM extensions can an administrator, here's the administrator that you mentioned, add to Azure Arc enabled servers to configure it for log forwarding to a log analytics workspace? So all the logs that are on the Windows server, and there are plenty, <laughs> it's not only the system and the application log and the security logs, there are plenty. I don't know if it, if there are 100, uh, but there are a lot. Uh, what can we use? So A, we can use a custom script extension uh, to uh, configure that. We can use B, the Microsoft dependency agent, and C, the log analytics extension. So oh, this, this is, is a hard a one. It's a dangerous you... question. <laughs> Bitte? Please? It's a very dangerous question because which VM extension can an administrator well, um, if I might know my PowerShell, I might be able to deploy this that, extension yeah. through a custom script extension. But I think there is a better way, right? True, true. But it doesn't say in the question. It doesn't say what is the best way, no? Yeah. So, so it, if you are very good in PowerShell, of course, you can do that. So, yeah. But I think A is not the right answer. So oh. maybe we go, Fine. if you don't know, maybe you, you look for some similarities. And I hope I didn't lean, I, I didn't do it wrong, but I think the right answer is C. So the log analytics extension, uh, you can uh, roll that to your machine. You can deploy it through the Arc agent, and then uh, it will add your uh, server to uh, log analytics. So next question, which software component allows an administrator to use Azure policies to audit settings with the operating system of Arc-enabled servers to evaluate their compliance? Is it A? the connected machine agents, B, the Microsoft dependency agent, or C, guest configuration. And I think this is a hard one. Oh. Didn't you study up before we, 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 before we did? <laughs> so, Bart, what do you think is the right answer? Well, I, I, I think key here is within the operating system. Yeah, that is. Of an ARC-enabled <laughs> server. And I think an ARC-enabled server is, is, is not the, the owner, but might be um, uh, someone less frequently visiting. Yeah. L l like a guest. OK. <laughs> and, and you know the, the Dutch saying, when in doubt, choose answer C. <laughs> OK, so. The right one is, of course, Bert is correct, is answer C. You, you're right. We are not talking about Azure Arc. It's an ad administrator um, doing an Azure policy to, uh, or it's an administrator or a guest installing it. So let's skip to the last module. We have 18 minutes left uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, the last part, uh, monitoring uh, or the monitor Azure Stack HCI clusters and their virtualized workload with Azure Arc. And um, you did an awesome demo from Karsten. Yeah, I, I thank you, Bert. Part. That's that, yeah. that's uh, increasing the pressure a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Another important advantage of Azure Arc is the ability to centralize and standardize enterprise-wide management and monitoring of technology assets, regardless of their location. And as we learned before, an Azure Stack HCI cluster is not in Azure. You have it on premises. It's it's either in your data center or maybe you co-locate it in another data center, but it's not in Azure. Yeah. So um, how can we integrate an Azure Stack HCI with Azure Arc? And uh, this was already answered or uh, was a question already that we answered. When you install an Azure Stack HCI cluster and you want to use it, you have to register it in Azure. And uh, 
just a trial. So you, you want to try out Azure Stack HCI and you can install it in virtual machines, by the way. It's, it has all the functionalities, but it's best, of course, on hardware. There is a, There was a 30 day trial period. Uh, Microsoft increased that to 60 days. But when you install your Azure Stack HCI cluster and then you have to register it, then the trial peri period starts. It's at that time where it's ARC enabled. So this is not completely correct here. So by when you register a cluster in Azure, it's usually ARC enabled. Yeah? So how to leverage Azure ARC to centralized monitor uh, um, of Azure Stack HCI clusters. Yeah, we can add, um, if we haven't, or we, we add our cluster through the registration and there are ways, if you don't do that, you can still do it with PowerShell afterwards. So if you forgot it, or you have an older cluster that is not 21 HT because uh, the full ARC enablement is in the last Azure Stack HCI edition. We are now at, uh, uh, 21 H2, and they are working heavily on 22 H2. Uh, who is curious? The 21 is a year, and uh, H2 is the calendar, how you call it, the half of the year. So uh, there was an Azure Stack HCI edition 20 H2. So uh, it came out in December 2022, so 20 H2, and there was not the full ARC enablement implemented. So if you have an old cluster and you update it, you want to I hope you want to enable the full ARC experience on those clusters. You can do it afterwards. If you install a new cluster, 21H2, it's done with the registration. Oh, yeah. I, I, I have those days as well. Don't, don't you have those that, that you feel like an old cluster? <laughs> all the time. I'm oh. already over 50, so I feel like an old cluster all the time. Um, so the purpose is, of course, we have a lot of insight. If an, if an Azure Stack HCI, uh, HCI cluster is registered in ARC, and I will show you that, we, we see a lot of insight into the cluster. And even with the ARC bridge, we can also bridge into the VMs. So we don't have to uh, register every single VM. It's done, it's done for us uh, with the ARC bridge. Yeah, you see here, we, ha we have... Uh, um, an interface for um, the monitoring activity, uh, management access control. We, we get uh, tags, we get the, lo uh, the locks um, and all the good stuff that ARC gives us uh, in, the, in the portal. And I'm pretty sure it's not what's there is not uh, complete. They will add uh, more and more features over time. So um, I will now do a demo. So I have to switch the screen. So you see here my, my server that I enabled in ARC um, is now, I refreshed the Azure ARC part where we are in the servers. And you see here, I added the S2D2 node one. The S2D2 node two was my guinea pig. With, uh, with, I tested it before I showed it to you. So this is new to ARC. And if we choose it, you see here, we have a lot of possibilities. We have update management, we have the policy policies, inventory, change tracking. But to be fair, we have also to add some things in Azure. For example, we, we need this uh, uh, log analytics workspace where the logs are uploaded. So we need a bit infrastructure that we have to create in Azure first. And then we have for update management, we also have to create um, an, automa uh, an automation um, role or user and so on so uh, but it's all well documented if you if you click for example on policies and uh, if you need to do some things here it would be would be explained here so in the moment we see that's nice this server is overall 100% uh, compliant but i think it, nothing is really checked right mm -hmm. so but we are at azure stack hci if we look here at the infrastructure first let's go to home and I go to the Azure Stack HCI part in Azure. I told you we have to register our cluster in Azure so that we can 
uh, deploy workloads on it. And this cluster is a pretty new four node Azure Stack HDI cluster. It's hardware. We have 64 cores here. Last time the cluster connected to Azure was four hours ago. So it has, it has to connect to Azure at least every 30 days to, um, to give Azure the information how many cores are in the system. Uh, and uh, it, it is built by the use of the core. So if they are uh, 64 cores, we pay our monthly fee and then we are done with the operating system. You see here, all the nodes seem to be ARC enabled. And th that was done when I registered the cluster. I, it was yesterday, so in preparation uh, to this. And I also enabled monitoring. So we have here another tab and we see the monitoring. Um, the log analytics, now the log analytics agent is also installed on all nodes and in the cluster, and we get more information here. We see our drives. The cluster has 24 drives, 24 NVMEs, and all are healthy. That's good. So we have those information in Azure, and we can now uh, also create some alerts or um, in monitoring and if one drive wouldn't be healthy, we, we can create an alert, we can create a, a mail or an SMS that you get on your smartphone we mentioned before. Uh, so you are aware that there is a change in the cluster and uh, we will be informed over Azure. And you see there are 10 virtual machines in the cluster, six are running, four are not running. We have seven volumes for our VMs, everything. This is the most important part. We have no health alerts. So the cluster is smooth running. We see our CPU information, um, how many gigahertz we have, how many are used, how many memory is used. And of course, in the background, we also have the logs. We can create um, graphs and see how it went over the time. Um, then we have other things you see here. We have to enable the capabilities. Log analytics is configured, monitoring is configured, and we can do much more things. If so, here we see the extensions. Uh, we could uh, we could deploy extensions. Uh, we see we see the monitor agent is up and running on all nodes. That's good. So this is a requirement that we can uh, deploy something. We have the configuration, the logs, and this is new, quite new. When we have the Arc Bridge installed in the cluster and you have to deploy it then we can also do crazy things so we can um, um in essence we can also deploy azure vms so when you create an azure a virtual machine it's created in an azure data center you choose your um, region, for example, West Europe, that would be Amsterdam or a German region, and uh, uh, it would be deployed in an Azure data center uh, in those regions. But if we install the Arc Bridge, we get like an own region. Region is not the correct word, but it's like a region for Azure. And then we can deploy virtual machines from Azure in our Azure Stack HCI cluster. So you get your virtual machine, you deploy it not in an Azure data center on premises. Of course, we have to do some things because imagine I at my home, I have a, a, a one gigabit uh, internet connection down, but it's not synchronous. I only have a 60 megabit up, but I'm fortunate in Germany, we have a lot of people where their sites are only connected with 100 megabit and uh, maybe 10 megabit up. So if I would deploy a very complex, large virtual machine from Azure, maybe with SQL installed or whatever I want, and this machine has maybe 100, 200 gigabytes, if you do it to an Azure data center, it's quite fast. But if I would do it from Azure to on-premises, and I have only 100 megabit download speed, that is roughly 10 megabytes per second, you can calculate how long it takes to push a, a VM that is maybe 100, 200, 300 gigabytes to Azure. So it takes a while. So we have also the possibilities to store VMs locally and from Azure, with Azure Arc, 
we create new VMs that are enabled with all the good stuff like extensions and everything. I can't show it to you because I, I had problems to install the, um, the bridge. So I, I show it here. I will increase that too. I just show it where it would be. So this is Windows Admin Center. Uh, and management tool, bird set, we can, we can leverage all the local management. So here I go to my cluster. And this is now completely on premises. Um, it will, it will also look into my cluster is everything is okay. And it should be, it should show us the same stuff than Azure. So we see all the drives, we have no alerts, everything is fine. And if I go to the settings, these are the settings of my cluster. And I go down here. You see the Azure. Now, where is the where is the resource bridge? There. Oh, two up. There's a resource bridge. It's uh, the I called it Arc Bridge, but here the name is Resource Bridge. So if I deploy the resource bridge, then we can do all this great stuff with resources from Azure, with VMs, with disks, and so on, and deploy it on our machine. So that's a much better integration uh, than we take a VM, install our Arc agent into. We get a much better implementation. The, I think the picture is up here. So we have to set up the bridge. A lot of questions. It will deploy the bridge on premises. Unfortunately, the VAC module I, it's a preview it has some issues with my environment so i can't show that to you talking about but now we have we are still five minutes to go so i hope this was a quick overview about some things if you have your azure stack hdi cluster arc enabled uh, i hope you can imagine what you can do i will switch back to the presentation uh yeah carsten maybe it is it's a good idea to uh uh, switch back to questions to yes. see if we covered everything. So the knowledge check and and Karsten, let's do this. You, you do know it. everything, right? Uh, I hope I hope I I know some. So here we go. What is a simple method to identify the manufacturer and model of hardware uh, of cluster nodes? A few Azure Stack HCI clusters in your organization. I know this one. I know this one. I know that one. So A, integrate the Azure Stack HCI cluster with Azure Monitor and run a custo query. Uh, B, use Windows Admin Center to connect to each cluster. C, use the Azure Stack HCI home blade in the Azure portal. And no, it's answer D. It's answer D. It's answer D. What is it? Walk to the server cabinet <laughs> and watch the physical servers. Cool. <laughs> so this is the same uh, in the question before. I'm I'm quite sure if we have Azure monitoring, you can create some custo queries to get those information. Yeah, but I think uh, it's not a. It's it's a way, but uh, there's a much easier way, and I I showed it. So um, I hope we are done. Um, it's C. Yeah. And uh, let's go to the next question. This is the last one, and then uh, uh, we are nearly done. What Azure Resource Manager feature should an administrator choose to facilitate consolidated billing of Azure Stack HCI clusters? A, Activity Log, B, Access Control, C, Tags. Hmm, let's see. Without Access Control, I don't have access to the data. Yeah. Without an activity log, I cannot see what someone has done. But I think to be able to diversify in billing. Yeah. I yeah. need C. Yeah. Consol That's quite true. Yeah. So I think we uh, covered everything. Uh, so we described Azure Arc and its component and use cases. We described the principle of integration of Azure Arc and Azure Stack HCI. We and showed in the that. last module. Um, we has we we showed a little bit the benefits of Azure Arc enabled Azure Stack HCI. So uh, let's go back to um, Laurent and uh, let's promote the next session, right? The next yeah, session because this is, is a whole introduction series. 
yeah, of the series to Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes. And that's something I'm, I'm very interested in because it's uh, tonight, as you see. Um, so this evening, it's, uh, we see the US Pacific time, so Redmond time in essence, uh, uh, in Germany and in, in, in the Netherlands, it should be at, uh, at 7 p.m. Central European time. Oh, thank you for that, uh, Karsten. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this show. Um, a big, big thanks uh, to Jimmy and Flo and Laurent. Uh, in the background, doing their thing, doing uh, studio management, answering all of the questions. I also saw uh, Mr. Maurer coming in, the living legend. Um, thanks to you, Karsten, for uh, for joining me uh, in this session. Yeah, same to you, Bert. It it was a pleasure. Uh, I thought we had, of course, too much time. It it uh, uh, in the end, it was right on point. Great, I think. <laughs> Great thing. All right, that's it for, for us for today. Have a great uh, remainder of your day, and we hope to have given you some handles in your next journey within the HCI and Azure Arc space. Um, go and try it out. Um, there's also a uh, um, lab environment you can spin up in Azure for this specifically. So you can just sandbox this, and see what you can do with it and how you can deploy this within your organization. So Maybe you see you next all. time. Bye. See you. <laughs>